Hello, welcome to the workshop, uh, Project 1. Uh, this is part of Pyramid Hope. I'm Jerry Durand and I'll be taking you through this project and uh, operating the computer and instructing you on how all this works. Uh, sorry about the audio, I need to get a new microphone. I'll, I should have that by the next video. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick look at the computer that I use here or will be using here and the 3D printer that I'll be using and give you a little bit of explanation as to how it works. In the future you'll have uh, uh, more detailed information as I go through each step of the process and you'll eventually uh, see the final product printed and shipped. Thank you very much. Uh, on to the uh, desktop demonstrations. Okay, here we're looking at the desktop. This is uh, TurboCAD Pro Platinum 21. And uh, this is a commercial program that's quite expensive. Um, you most probably will never purchase a copy of this, but anybody in the local area is welcome to use our copy in the office here uh, with supervision. Uh, anyway, this is our uh, water structuring device, the first one that we designed. This was entirely designed in TurboCAD here. Um, a CAD system is computer-aided design. It allows you to design things such as this uh, completely in the computer without ever putting a pencil to paper or uh, uh, building an item. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> aside from showing you the final look of the item, you can also uh, turn it, turn off the final rendering and look at an item as it uh, uh, shows all the internal structure, which can get confusing, but uh, it is quite necessary in designing. You can turn off uh, individual pieces of this and you can also select individual pieces that um, will light up and show you just that one piece so that you can see what you're doing. Basically the way I designed this is each one of these layers uh, was designed one at a time and then and the outer piece here was designed and then it was all stuck together in, in the computer here. I'll go into more detail of that as the course goes along. <clears throat> These two windows here show the same item as here, but from different views. And you can change the view uh, to uh, other things, such as uh, show a different angle and uh, different renderings of it. Maybe you just want a, a quick render. Maybe you just want a uh, quick render of it, so uh, it starts you start having it do things such as hide lines and so on. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for, for this introduction for CAD system. So this lets you create what's called a solid model. This is a three-dimensional solid model of the item. And yeah, here, here's the item with hidden lines removed. So it's, it's not rendered to be pretty like this one. This just shows you uh, the basics. But the, this is quicker for the computer to do and quicker for you to work with. <clears throat> uh, rendering such as this can take quite some time depending on the computer. This is a fairly fast computer uh, with a lot of memory. Uh, anyway, uh, after the solid model is saved to disk, uh, it has to be converted into a form that the 3D printer can use. And for that, I use this other program called Simplify 3D, which also costs money. There are many free ones on the market. Same with CAD software. There are free, free CAD programs on the market. And um, depending on what you're doing, those could be just fine. So what this does is can, takes the 3D model that you see here and converts it into something that the... Uh, 3D printer can use. Now 3D printers can only work with things one layer at a time and on this printer here the layers are 0.2 millimeters each. So 
it needs to break this into slices every 0.2 millimeters. So I'm going to tell it to do that now. And I have several different things it can do. So I'll take that one. Again, this can take quite some time, except this is a fast computer. All right, now it's showing the completed uh, model as it would be sitting on the printer table. And I'll show the layers. Let me zoom in on this. So there's the very first layer. There's the second layer, third, and then in, internally, once you get past that skin on the bottom, it just makes a crosshatch in here to um, give a little support to the skin, but it's mostly hollow inside. So you can see where it's making it pretty hollow. And it just keeps building it up and up and up and up and up. And eventually it will run all the way up here. And in the case of this, after four hours and 52 minutes approximately, these times are never exact. Uh, so after five hours, this will be built. So yes, it takes five hours to make one of these. And uh, we've sold over 2,000 of these. So that's, you know, over 10,000 hours of uh, 3D printer time. And uh, they're also around 100 grams a piece. So that's a lot of plastic. Uh, anyway, so once you have this um, here uh, sliced and you like it, then you can save this to disk and um, I need to uh, turn on this disk. This is the disk for the 3D printer. So I'm just going to save that over to the 3D printer. And then next I'll show you a little bit about the 3D printer and um, then that will be the end of this uh, particular intro. So, see you in a bit. Okay, uh, from a distance, this is my messy 3D printing table. Uh, that is a uh, artillery uh, uh, Sidewinder X1 printer. That's a new one we bought here uh, after we moved. Uh, we this is our um, fifth 3D printer that we've owned. Uh, in the past, we've had two to three printers running at the same time making product. Uh, this one uh, can build items about 300 millimeters wide and about 300 millimeters tall. The plastic up here is PETG, which is what soda bottles are made out of. And it's um, completely um, safe for uh, contact with food and drink as you see with your soda bottles. And for anyone not familiar with a 3D printer, what this does is the filament, this plastic, comes down into this head which is about 200, and, well over 200 degrees centigrade, is melted and squirts out a little nozzle on the bottom while this table moves and this head moves to make the item that you want made. And so I will now start up the printer. And while that is starting, the, uh, I will clean the table. I'll, this is a little isopropyl alcohol or a spirit and just some tissue paper. The table needs to be clean so the plastic will stick to it. This is an etched glass plate and it has a heater underneath. The table will be hot while it's printing. Again to make the plastic stick to it. So now let me uh, move the camera down. Uh, 
that isn't very much in focus, but I'm going to tell the camera to uh, preheat the um, um, well actually I'm just going to tell it to go ahead and print or start printing so this is the um, PWC one that we saved on that disk and so now the table is preheating the um, glass plate will heat to 70 degrees centigrade and when that's done heating the print head will um, he uh, start heating up and until the plastic is melted and only then will it start printing. So I'll um, uh, pause this and as Clive would say one moment please and uh, I'll be back when the printer is ready to start printing. Alright the print head is up to temperature. There's a little bit of plastic uh, oozing out of the bottom of it which I will clean off um, as soon as it starts moving. It is now just uh, start priming the nozzle. Uh, basically, just squirt some out to get the uh, everything working. So now it prints this um, skirt around the outside of where it will be printing. And this again is just to get the nozzle, um, all the air bubbles out of the nozzle, get all the plastic flowing. Now it's actually started to print the what will be the final product. So you can see the inner line. Three D printers are not for people that are in a hurry. Everything seems very, very slow. So it's printing these lines close, so close together that they touch, and the plastic then sticks to each to the previous piece as it cools. The uh, print head itself is now at 260 centigrade, and the table is at 70 centigrade. So it will continue this then for working like this for around five, five hours to finish the um, item. I'll let this run for a little bit longer so that you can see it do a couple of layers. Actually I'll pause the video and then bring you back when it's a little bit higher. <clears throat> That white streak you see is inside the uh, skin of the base, so uh, it's just a little strand that uh, kind of dribbled out of the head, and um, it doesn't hurt anything. It's good when it doesn't happen, but um, you, you sometimes get these dribbles when it first starts. It's now making the second layer. While it's doing that, <clears throat> I'll show you a few items here. This is a base that I aborted uh, when it had only printed a little way. So you can see that uh, cross hatching internally filling it. You can see the smooth skin on the bottom with a little ripple in it. And the sides of this are starting to get a curve to them. Here's one that's run a little bit further up. And this one had uh, a uh, error and halted on its own. This is a completed unit, a water structuring device. But um, it it still needs a little bit of tweaking to work with this printer 
Uh, 3D printers need a lot of adjustment in the way you print to make things work right. And you occasionally get little defects, like on the bottom this has that little dark uh, spot there. That's a little piece of burned plastic that was apparently stuck to the head that I didn't see. Um, they happen, but when it happens, you can't sell that to a customer at full price. You either throw it away or sell it to a customer at a discount as a um, defective uh, unit or cosmetically defective unit, which is what we generally do. Sell them for half price. Uh, saves from throwing them in the trash. You throw a lot of this material into the garbage when you're uh, 3D printing. There's a lot of um, problems, errors, uh, and just to, you have to do trial runs uh, to get things right. So I'll be making several more of these before I ever get one that I can sell to a customer. Um, I had it working well with the old 3D printers, but we left those in the United States. Anyway, so I will pause this and come back uh, when the print's a little higher.